Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my live let's play of Magma Episode 0. Continuing on from the last stream, I'm going to collect all the remaining CDs, and then I'll do the Ultimate Arena Challenge. So let's get started at Kingdom Crisis. Aha, I knew there'd be one of these pipes. Okay, see the bolts around the edge? I see. Clever. That actually counts as a ladder. Go down steps this time. Lo and behold, here's a CD. Base, I feel it. I see. It's the hole on the left here. Well, that was fairly straightforward. I didn't check this out earlier because I thought this was only where these characters spawned in. What do you have to say? Sorry about that, Pikmin. Man. I destroyed all of your brethren. This is what happens if you call Galaxy Man after you collect all the CDs in his stage. So as I said, I'm going to have to create a new save file if I want to showcase all the phone calls to Galaxy Man. Could this be it? It is. I can't believe I missed this during my first playthrough. There's something strange you discovered. If I use a shield, it immediately stops the auto scrolling. And there's the CD. Maybe this is it? When I first went through the stage, I simply went to the right. So let's go down here now. There's the CD. And where the two pathways link up with each other. In order to get this CD, you must have a double jump. I see, it was always up here. I didn't know exactly where the CD is, so I'll meet you at the end of the stage. Oh neat, we actually unlocked the shortcut if we complete the stage once. I thought it was just there for a joke. That makes my life a whole lot easier. Back in this elevator section, I need to be on the right side. Frankly, what I should have done in the first place was deliberately take a debt. Yeah, I get it.
Oh. I was hoping there'd be another ball on the right. Here is CD number one. So this time, I have to take the lower route. The dark and spooky one. During my first playthrough, I took the upper route, but I didn't break through the rocks. Wait a minute, is this- yeah, that's a big one. Cool idea. Works well with a spider-oriented stage. Making sure I'm not messing anything in the dark. And they stand out anyways. This time, take the lower route. I keep getting confused thinking that the optional route is the right one. Hi there, Internet Destroyer. You are supplanted by Edge anyways. Now to collect the two remaining CDs. Well, this is going to be interesting. This stage has a ton of paths. As I said before, this feels more like a Sonic level. And the hint I got from Galaxy Man is a bit vague. He's saying I have to keep an eye on where the general area of the CD is, and its relative vertical spot. Even during this playthrough, I'm probably going to miss a few pathways. This stage is simply so expansive. Much more than its inspiration, that's for sure. Just let me know if I go ahead of where the CD is supposed to be. I quite enjoy these kinds of stages. The wide open ones which you have a lot of mobility in. But finding items in them, especially secrets, can prove to be problematic. That's why I'll include most of the search in this stage. I took the upper pad last time, so you're right, let's take the lower pad. I see you, CD. That's CD number one collected. I 
Am I still on the construction site? Okay, I'm not sure when I'll be leaving the construction site though. Something of a little hole. I didn't explore this side, did I? I did. But I see something's down there. Hello, Snake Eater. This speed hole? I think this is the one. It is. I actually thought this would be on the upper pathway, but this works out for me too. So that should be all the CDs collected. Back in Mega City. Now let's take a look at all the CDs we've collected. I'll quickly time through them.
So let's take a quick look at something else. I've 100% completed the game. I've completed the main game, collected all the upgraded ships, purchased the other costumes, got all the energy elements, collected all the CDs, purchased all the other remaining upgrades, finished the arenas, and did all the other stuff that contributed to 100%. However, I'm not done with the game just yet. There are a few other things left to do. People have been asking me to use the CDs here. The CDs I've been collecting are for the database entries, not for the music tracks. What I just showcased was a sound test. Thanks for pointing it out. I'll quickly tum through them. Feel free to pause and unpause the video if you want to read these. Directly taking the idea from Eggman and Bass, but expanding upon it, because now we have descriptions. Even on characters who only made a one screen appearance, such as Knuckles and a truck. So scratch my earlier statement, these descriptions are longer than I thought. They give a lot of insight into the lore of this game. But as Buster pointed out, we're missing stuff like the good points, bad points, likes and dislikes. To be quite frank, I honestly prefer this over that. It's a nice expansion on the ideas in Mega Man and Base. Don't get me wrong, I'd like to have those two, but as a short addition to this. So by this alone, collecting the individual CDs is more worthwhile than collecting the individual Noble Nickels in Magma 2. I like how we finally concluded the plotline involving the energy elements, which was started all the way back in Magma 1. I say started, but really the ball got rolling in Magma 2. Back in 1, there were only hints to the plot, and that only really occurred during the end. We apparently even have information of bosses who didn't even show up in this game, like Shadow Gacha. He showed up in Magma 1R. And I agree with you, Buster. I much prefer a Super Nightman. He feels like a better super boss, a much more satisfying bonus reward. No kidding, Jenok. All this lore expressed in the CDs and museum really make this feel like a living, breeding world. For once, we don't have an excuse plot. We have a plot that actually takes itself somewhat seriously and explores the implications of several technologies.
And these ideas can be explored even further. This game has already confirmed that alternate universes exist. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. If we have access to other universes, the sky's the limit. How many other universes has this game crossed over with anyways? I know it's already crossed over with Mario, Sonic, Contra, Freedom Planet, and a few other games too. Toho 2 That's one way of making most Mega Man Classic fan games canon. I'd love to see how this world is developed in the future. With the current world setup, the Mega Man X series and onwards can take place, at least the way we know it. If it does take place, it's going to be very, very different. To Tank, when I first played Magma 1, I didn't expect to get so invested in this world's lore. I thought it would simply be satisfied with an excuse plot, but no, it has one of the most developed worlds of any Mega Man fan game. And it's all in-game, it's not buried in the manuals. Adding to my earlier statement, X can be built along with Sigma, but I doubt there'll be a Maverick virus. And even if there's a Maverick virus, it'll probably be quelled much faster. As in, most of humanity won't be destroyed. And yep, can't forget Pepsi Man. After his own fan game was cancelled, and he got defeated in two, we were finally able to find him here. Maybe Ruslan. I doubt it'll be X9 though. I think it'll be more like an X10 or X11. Or perhaps it'll travel into its own alternate universe. Can't wait for Mega Man 30 then, Sylveon. Unless you skip the Mega Man 31 from 29. Magma Tree and Magma 48 Hours, Roslan. I can only talk about the Death Kid bosses, Pixel Boy. I can't talk about the submission bosses yet.
I just wonder how the arenas are going to be set up. There are going to be at least 100 bosses. That's all I know. Blinding Flash Dead God Swing. That's all the CDs. 